Well, good evening, everybody. This is Russ Davis speaking to you from Ringside at International Amphitheater in Chicago, where tonight the gorgeous one, gorgeous George himself, the old toast of the coast, is meeting Der Hans Schnabel. Seems like our Jeffries has a new cutaway here tonight. This one is rather an orchid color. Too bad we don't have color TV. That is widespread quantities. Jeffries is standing here at attention as if he were getting ready to pipe the Grand Admiral of the fleet aboard. George will be coming in from your right. We understand there's something a little special been added tonight. Well, there's some of the Andy Frame men who always precede him. And here it is. Gorgeous George. One of the... Oh, no, ostrich fe... Well, shades of Sally Rand. Police. Ostrich feathers, no less. Say, aren't we done up beautifully? Now look, George, don't be sensitive because the customers are hooting and yelling. What else can you expect, dear boy? There are pink and white marabou's here. What on earth they are? I don't know. The note was just handed to me, but, but the robe is pink. Yeah, Hans, I agree with you, boy. <laughs> Yes, that's the guy you're going to wrestle, Georgie. And you want to be a little bit careful of him. He's got about as much horsepower as one of these big GE diesels. Good evening, George. A few uh, Georgie pins for the peasants here. George strutting around in this pink satin. Oh, lovely. Looks like he has a new halo hairdo here tonight. Notice how it seems to make a little halo around his head. It will until we get in about, oh, 15 or 20 minutes into the match. And then it will look like the original inspiration for the song Rag Mup. After a hard day on the post office floor. This uh, match here tonight is rather a special arrangement. Uh, George, knowing that Hans is a great one to get into an opponent's hair, refused to wrestle unless Hans would let his hair be. With a 60-minute time limit, the contestant in this corner from Los Angeles, California, weighing 240 pounds, Hot Schnabel! There he is, the old powerhouse himself. His opponent in the opposite corner, that toast of the coast, that human Sidney Novak has had the nod for the refereeing chores on this match. And I do not use that phrase advisedly because refereeing a match between these two guys is going to be a big, big job. George wants to see Hans's back here. It used to be in the old days that wrestlers would anoint themselves to a considerable extent with oil of wintergreen, claiming, of course, that the oil of wintergreen had some sort of an antiseptic value, and I presume that it has. But the main idea was that the oil base which carried the wintergreen extract would help make them just a little bit harder to hold on to. Well, now, wait a minute, George. If, if, if your coppin looks at everybody else, they're going to have one at you. This boy Novak during the other eight hours of his day, when he works for a living, drives a taxi cab. 
And so he's not known as a gentle person either. Oh, hello, a bustle, if you please. Dear me, I thought that gown was all one piece. Have a look. Hans is bound to determine to put his hands on George here, and George is just as determined that he, that he will not. Just a moment, please, Mr. Novak. Look at the look on Novak's face as if to say, ah, oh, nuts. Hey, George, he's got his hand on your shoulder. Come on. Honest to goodness. I've seen everything in the wrestling ring, but this, this beats most of it. Don't ever sell this boy gorgeous George short as far as actual physical prowess is concerned. He possesses a lot of it. There's the bell, and we're off and running at International. This is Russ Davis speaking to you from ringside. This is the first time that we have happened to handle a match here where Hans wrestled gorgeous George. I think this is the second time in Hans's career that he has met him. Once out on the coast, Well, there's a step out. George, uh, leave us not start any skullduggery because you're fooling with the master of same. There's a count of four in Illinois which is employed to break an illegal hole. Better be careful, Georgie. Got a hunch that the old blockbuster will tie on you here. Hans is going to bust him, and George knows it. You know, there's one thing that Hans has not laid a hand on George's hair as yet. A little bit of this keeps up, and uh, he'll get in his hair. Don't worry. George refused to sign the contract for this match until he was assured by promoter Kohler that Kohler could deliver one one qualification of the contract, that Hans did not pull his hair. Maybe George is getting tender-headed or something, I don't know. Maybe the supply of Tony is running short. Oh, brother, did he get out from under that rope in a hurry? Hans made him squeal. Run under hammerlock on Hans. There's a head scissors. George flailed out of it. George, uh, you're getting yourself all set up to get your hair pulled, boy. Still a hammerlock on Hans. We've got more youngsters who ringside tonight than I've seen in a long, long while. No, uh -oh, Hans finally grabbed George by his gorgeous locks. Hans was trying to set up the flying mare. It didn't work out. Hey, 
Look at that kid eating that hot dog so nonchalant. Oh, fine. Well, he hadn't got old Hans bent up yet by a long time. Hans is willing to let him have that good hard right for absolutely nothing. I'm going to put my hands behind me and put you in the position of hitting a defenseless man, says George. Long about that time, Hans found out he wasn't so. George trying for a double outside wrist lock, Japanese. Hans has come into the ring here tonight with a very heavy beard, and boy, is he roughing up George's face with it. Well, so he's pulling your hair. You've been pulling his. Contract or no contract. Those are rabbit punches right to the base of the skull. And a knee lift. Rather sent Georgie flying, didn't it, huh? Georgie's tummy there. Uh oh, uh oh. Brother, that'll fix him. A little bit of that. Chin lock posted into a body press. Hans is really letting him have those rights. George, you were pulling hair. Come on. Get up, boy. Okay, so he punched you with a fist. He got away with it. Till you tattled on him. Tattletail. Cut loose with a big one there, didn't he? Here's a chin lock, reversed, or head to head, hobo fashion here. Still the same detail. Chin lock, reverse. Mm -hmm. A slight problem involved here. George is cutting off Hans's wind. That's why Novak is breaking it. 
instead of a chin lock, it has also come to include his mouth and his nose. Hard one right in under the heart. Oh, <laughs> you could hear that one splat all over International Amphitheater. Well, contract or no contract, Hunts is going to get in his air. Boy, he heaved him clear across the ring, and this is a 22-foot ring. There's George's version of the flying mare. Maybe. One, two, three, and the first fall thusly goes to Gorgeous George with his own West Coast variety of the flying mare. That's the old original. The stecker that some of the boys used to use before they started throwing it over their shoulder. George is still a little bit afraid here of Hans. All Hans wants is for Novak to get out of the way for two minutes and he'll alter the complexion of the situation. Bobby Burns, he'll make it official. Nine minutes, 58 seconds, with a flying headlock, beware the first ball. Gorgeous George! So there you've got the first fall in this proposed two out of three affair between this little lad right here, gorgeous George, who at the moment is not so gorgeous, and Hans Blockbuster Schnabel. Who are you calling for, George? Oh, Mr. Novak, he wants to put in a small complaint. Well, we'll wait while you do it. You mess up your coiffure, hmm? Go on back and quit, quit being a chronic driver, Georgie. That's it. Call in Jeffries or whomsoever you want to tidy you up a bit if you feel that way. We'll wait. The way George is jumping here, you'd think he's got on these pogo pumps, wouldn't you? The KFNO uh, we're talking about here not too long ago. The Beulah Witch had gotten from somebody for a present. Well, here's the second fall beginning. No time out here while you get on a double girdle, Georgie. <coughs> No more guessing games. Hans will not guess which hand the marble is in. Hans has the ropes. Georgie had the trunks. Here's the press. Novak's telling him to break it up. What did he mash his little old Adam's apple then? Mm, mercy me. Come on, George. Get up, boy. You haven't changed to a tenor. Boy, old Hans really landed on him, didn't he? There was a knee into George's ribs. Uh-oh. A little bit of conniving on Georgie's part there. He came up with his leg lock. And Georgie changed his leg lock into a toehold here. Several counts of one on Hans here. 
George, uh, you are using the roll-ups. Get out of his hair, Hans. This agreement not to pull George's hair has really hampered Hans. Okay, Mr. Novak caught you then. Come on, gorgeous. One, two, I'm gonna make him break it. No, you gotta get clear up, George. Okay, that handles the situation. Just clop him in the choppers. Wait a minute, you may have to disinfect him on, so it'll slow the match up. Someone would have had pneumonia. Had they been an inch closer to that, either that or rigor mortis. There's a headlock on Hans. Check. Oh, Georgie boy. He managed to work his way out. Uh, where are you going there? Now, you leave all those people alone, George. They're quite right in wanting to see you get all, all worked over here. Seems like that things are getting a little rough for Hans. Oh, well, uh, could be for George, too. Chin lock posted. Hans didn't let go of it. There's another one, and he's hanging tight to him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Boy, there's a backflip from way back. One, two, three. And the second fall thusly goes to Hans. And there's poor little George, all bent out of shape. Mercy me. Andy Frayne men are standing around waiting to keep the crowd off of him if and when he should wander out of the ring. Don't quit worrying about it, George. Hans is in his corner. Four minutes, 20 and one half seconds. With a blockbuster, the winner of the second fall, Hans Schnabel! No Hans puts on that blockbuster. I don't know where it got that name unless it just shatters a whole block of territory when a guy hits a map after having had it put on him. Did you notice how he picked George up just right by the neck and placed his hand ever so lightly on his wishbone and then pushed? Well, something had to give. And George did. Hans keeps trying to follow Novak here. I think it's with the idea of getting within arm's length of George. He got him crippled up here. He wants to keep him that way all through the rest period. And of course, one lick uh, could very well do that. Well, we'll be ready to go here in the third and final fall in a minute now. Back you go. Maybe some trico windshield wipers would be better, Hans. It'd look a little odd wearing them, but it'd certainly save a lot of lost motion. Don't you think? Hmm? Boy, he's a brute of a man. 245 pounds of it. There's the 10 second whistle. Wait a minute, fellas. You gotta wait till the whistle's done went. Yeah, and the bell's done blue. Okay, we're off and running again. And Hans is starting to run. Possibly can. Oh, fine. Backbreaker in the corner of the ropes, and then a body slam. George is out of the ropes. Another body, no, another backbreaker. Oh, fine. Boy, has he got him loused up. 
Uh, Hans, uh, temper, temper, temper. Leave us not lose it. George trying to get back in. Hans is bound and determined he's not going to get back in. Get out of the way. Uh-oh, Novak's going to call it off here. That's one thing these referees in Illinois will not stand for, is being roughed up. The West Coast referees take a lot of abuse from these wrestlers, but in Illinois, they have been instructed not to. And so said Novak has disqualified Hans. Match, uh-oh, George uh, going to bring a common denominator with him here, it seems like. Lego, I'm going to bust it on his head. Hans, uh, you know, you're going to wind up by being disqualified here for about 16,000 years if you keep this up. Now get out of the ring like Mr. Novak tells you. George has won the match. There's his hand held high. George won it by disqualification because Schnabel started roughing up Novak. Go on, get out, Second, go take a shower. The referee disqualified Hans Schnabel, gave the fall the winner, George. George! Don't go push any much. You might have to ride in these cabs someday. Get going, says Novak. Well, gorgeous George has won over Hans Schnabel by virtue of a disqualification. George would have had one coming to him had he been permitted to use that chair he dragged into the ring. But uh, I guess it's all over now but the showers and the long trip home.